It is my great pleasure to introduce Professor Saifola Rasuli. Saifola Rasuli is a distinguished professor of physics at the Institute for Advanced Studies in Base Science in Xinjiang, Iran. His passion for optics encompasses both theoretical and experimental aspects, focusing on areas like diffraction and Fourier optics, interferometry, Moiré techniques, non-diffracting beams, and singular optics. Dr. Rasulis' expertise extends to interdisciplinary topics, including fluid dynamics, atmospheric turbulence, meteorology, landslide detection, seismometry, and large-scale large structure vibration detection. He's the author of around 90 papers in estimate journals and over 100 papers in conference proceedings. He's a senior member of the SP and was awarded ICO ICDP Galeno de Nardo Award in 2009. In addition to his research in the boards, Dr. Rasuli has been actively involved with the Abdul Salam International Center for Theoretical Physics ICDP in Trieste, Italy. He has held significant roles on the EISBS, including social and cultural deputy, acting deputy uh, counselor of administration and finance, and head of student affairs. Currently, he serves as the head of the Elite Foundation of Sanyang Province, a role he has held since February 2020. On behalf of all the real members, I will come you, Professor, to this webinar. You can see that uh, the title of uh, presentation it is the fraction of structured beams from periodic and pure amplitude almost periodic structures. We name it PAPS and some applications. Uh, you can see, uh, do you have the second uh, slide? Yes. Can yes. you see? Yeah. The same? Okay. Okay. Uh, you can see the physics department the, in, the, in the photo. You can see the physics department of our institute, and in the background, uh, uh, part of the Zanjan city is seen. Uh, Zanjan is located in the north west of Iran, and I hope to see all of you here in near future and you can see some of my uh, graduate student and my postdocs but uh, some of them i went here and some of them left my group because they graduated okay uh, i will present uh, the, the uh, some research work on diffraction Therefore, it is necessary to know what is diffraction and what is the advantage of diffraction and disadvantage of diffraction in optics. I will present periodic structures, optical gratings, and Talbot phenomena, and uh, the effect of diffraction of light from these kind of structures. Then I will present something about the fraction of vortex, uh, optical vortex, vortices from two-dimensional periodic structures. And in this slide, I will introduce some methods for multiplication of optical vortices. Uh, and at the second part of the presentation, I will present some, some new research works on the diffraction of structures, beams from almost periodic structures. Uh, and uh, some, uh, some, uh, some diffraction effects in the near and far field of, uh, of the plane, Gaussian and structured beams from this kind of apertures will be reviewed. Uh, at, the at the end of the, my seminar, so, some applications in the optical teasers will be presented, okay? Uh, all of we know that uh, we cannot have, uh, have an image uh, or a shadow pattern with, with uh, sharp uh, edges. Also, we know that in the propagation of a laser beam, 
depend uh, the uh, divers or splits, and this kind of splitting of light causes uh, a limit in the imaging process. In other words, diffraction limits the spatial resolution of imaging. All of these uh, these uh, examples shows that show that the diffraction have some disadvantage in the nature. But in the in the uh, lab, we can see some other aspects of the diffraction. In the diffraction of a plane or Gaussian beam through a pinhole, we can see uh, Bessel function, Bessel function on the screen, uh, or in the diffraction uh, of a plane wave from a small vacuum disk, uh, we can see a small bright spot that is known as a Poisson spot, which, uh, which is introduced by Poisson. And these two phenomena show that the diffraction dem can demonstrate the wave nature of light. Also, when a laser beam falls onto a diffraction grating, it produces a widely diverging kind of rays. Uh, uh, I present some other example of diffraction. In the diffraction of plane wave from stride, as you can see, this kind of uh, diffraction patterns in one part of the, uh, the observing plane, we see parallel frames, and in the other part, we have almost the dark pattern, but in the we just in the in front of the edge, we have we haven't a sharp edge. Also, in the diffraction of a plane wave from a phase step, we can see this kind of diffraction diffraction pattern, and this kind of setup has many applications, like as as the interference in the metrology and measurement. Another example is the diffraction of the plane wave from, from a rectangular aperture. Okay, how we can determine the diffraction pattern? It is easy, using Fresnel diffraction integral. We can calculate the diffraction pattern at a given observation plane by using the Fresnel diffraction integral. Uh, uh, the, I mentioned that the diffraction has some limitation in, 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 in imaging. And uh, uh, the, any limitation in imaging can be considered as disadvantage of diffraction. But in the other side, diffraction has many advantages in optics. You can see Different uh, structured beams here all can be produced by diffraction of a plane or Gaussian beam from different apertures. For example, here you can see the intensity pattern of a radial carpet beam that can be produced in the diffraction of a plane wave from a radial grating, phase radial grating. And its corresponding phase pattern can be seen here. And in the next uh, pattern, you can see the intensity profile of, a, of an airy beam under propagation. Or in the next one, you can see the intensity pattern of a Bessel beam uh, that can be produced in the diffraction of a, a light plane uh, wave from a uh, cir circular ring aperture. And finally, you can see the diffraction pattern of a larger Gaussian beam having non-zero radial indices from an almost periodic structure in here. Uh, also, we know that a larger Gaussian beam having orbital angular momentum can be 
generated in the diffraction of a Gaussian beam from a fork grating that has a wave from such as this one you can see here, a twisted wave from that has. Okay. How can we determine the diffraction patterns? You see, in the near field, we can use this fernal and integral. And if the condition of far field uh, uh, to be uh, justified, then we can use uh, Fraunhofer and, uh, and uh, approximation, and we can use this integral. Okay. Now let us uh, introduce the diffraction of a plane wave from, from a periodic structure. The simplest one is a, uh, is a sinusoidal uh, grating, is a one-dimensional grating having sinusoidal profile. The, the transmission function of a sinusoidal amplitude grating can be written in this form and by using the Fresnel integral, one can uh, one can calculate the resulted in a, a resulted complex amplitude, and then uh, the result will be in this uh, in the in this form. And as you can see, in some distinct distances from the uh, from the grating planes we will have the same distribution of light as just after the grating. This means that the, the light beam distribution can be repeated in the space without using any lens. This effect known as Talbot effect or self-imaging effect. But in the, in the diffraction of a light, plain light, from a periodic one-dimensional sinusoidal amplitude grating, uh, in the, some other distinct uh, planes, we will have double frequency pattern, such this one. Okay, here you can see the diffraction pattern uh, after one dimensional and two dimensional sinusoidal and binary gratings. You can see that in some places the exact image of the grating can be produced, but in other distances, other images can be seen. All of this show the Talbot self imaging phenomenon. Here you can see the Talbot a carpet pattern. Suppose that here we insert the grating and here you can see the diffraction pattern at different propagation distances. And in some planes such as this one, here we can see the same image of the light just produced just after the grating. Therefore, here we have first self-image of the grating. But if you, you see very precisely, uh, you, uh, you can see that there is a lateral trans translation in the image. Therefore, this is not the first Talbot plane. This is the half Talbot plane. But in, in this plane, you can see a double frequency pattern and this plane known as the quarter Talbot plane, okay? And if we use a great two-dimensional periodic grating, having two different triodes in two uh, orthogonal direction, for example, in X direction and in Y direction, we have this kind of Periods, then you can see that the Talbot image in some places formed for, uh, for the vertical pattern, in some places for, for the horizontal one, and in some distinct places we have the, the, uh, the, the self-image of whole pattern. 
Okay. Here you can see the, the diffraction pattern of a two-dimensional structure. Uh, here I show you a one-dimensional pattern in the x direction. The next one is the one-dimensional pattern in the uh, correct direction. And the third one show uh, separable two-dimensional transmission function. The next one is also is separable, but the next one, the last one, is is a non-separate has a uh, periodic uh, feature uh, in both of directions, but uh, it, it is not separable, and we call it non-separable two-dimensional periodic function. You can see impulse of all of the patterns in the second row. Uh, in the diffraction of a plane wave from a non-separable structure, you can see that at given distances, the diffracted pattern, you can see here, the diffracted pattern to be separable. Therefore, we can conclude that under propagation, a transmission function or a light beam, two-dimensional light beam uh, complex function can be separated, okay? Now let us consider the diffraction of a plane wave from azimutually periodic structures. We name these structures as radial gratings. Why radial gratings? Gratings because their lines lie in the, in the radial direction, okay? If we use the, the uh, Fresnel integral and calculate the diffracted pattern, we reach to this kind of um, uh, complex amplitude, th this function. And you can see that the complex amplitude doesn't depend explicitly to Z, the propagation distance, or to the radial coordinate. This means that we have here a beam because the structure of diffracted pattern doesn't, doesn't change under propagation. And we have a, an invariant diffraction pattern under propagation, okay? You can see some experimental and uh, uh, experimental results in the second row and some calculated theoretical results in the first line. Well, all of these patterns remain uh, unchanged under propagation. We call them as radial carpet beam. If we use a radial carpet beam, a phase radial carpet beam, then we have this kind of pattern under propagation. This pattern never change under propagation except has some expansion without changing the overall form. We call this as radial carpet beam. Therefore, we can, we can conclude that in the diffraction of a plane wave from radial structures, we, we never see Talbot image, quarter Talbot image, and so on. Here, we produced just a beam, radial carpet beam. Now, let us explain how can we produce that kind of that kind of radial carpet beams. Suppose that we prepare this kind of phase pattern by an SLM or this one. The first one is a sinusoidal phase radial grating, and the second one is a binary phase grating, a binary phase radial grating. And the diffraction pattern can be calculated using this equation. Again, here again, you can see that the diffracted pattern never depends explicitly on the Z, the, 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 the diffraction distance, the propagation distance, or the radial 
uh, parameter. But R is related to the this R, the capital R, related to the small R and propagation distance using this equation. All of this means that the diffracted pattern remains unchanged under propagation. Two different radial carpet beams, uh, the intensity pattern of radial carpet beams, you can see here. Okay, let us to show you generation of uh, radial carpet beam and propagation of it. The plane wave propagates through a phase binary radial grating and you can see at different propagation distances, you can see propagation distances at the above line of the, of the pattern. At, at a distance about, about five meters, you will have this kind of, no, no, just at, the, at one meters, uh, you can see this pattern uh, in a window uh, you see here. Okay. Uh, the, you see that in the diffraction of a diffraction of a plane wave from radial structures, we cannot see self image of the structure. But if we add a term, to the, to the transmission function of radial grating, such as this one, then we see that we able to have, uh, we able to have uh, self image. We name this structure as azimutually periodic Bessel, Bessel based structures. And we show that it is possible to have self-image of radial structures if we add uh, an additional term like this one to the transmission function of the gratings uh, used in the diffraction. You can see here the diffraction pattern uh, under propagation from a, from a Bessel based radial structure. In some places, you can see the exact image of the light produced just after the grating. Okay, now let us uh, consider the diffraction of vortex beam from different structures. The structure can be periodic or non periodic. Uh, actually, we, we drive the theoretical uh, methods to calcul calculate diffraction pattern of a vortex beam from different apertures. Uh, you can see here, if we, uh, here you see, you see the, uh, the Fresnel integral and if we define this term, these terms together as a hypothetical aperture where T is the aperture function, then by getting free transform of hypothetical aperture, one can find the diffraction pattern just by calculating the free transform of hypothetical aperture function. Okay, and for the far field, we have a similar uh, uh, rule where the diffracted pattern can be calculated just by calculating the, uh, the Fourier transform of the just Fourier transform of the aperture, not hypothetical aperture. Okay. Here you can see the intensity pattern of a vortex beam, Lager Gaussian beam, having a topological charge of three, positive three, and the corresponding phase pattern. And uh, here also you can see another 
uh, vortex beam having uh, topological charge of one and in here also you can see intensity and phase pattern of different vortex beams uh, we can we can show illustrate the intensity the, the the complex amplitude of a vortex beam with two forms uh, as shown here and here okay we can use this kind of theoretical uh, function to calculate the diffracted pattern from a given aperture when we illuminate the structure by a vortex beam having a topological charge of L. Therefore, if we multiply the transmission function of the aperture into this one, uh, this one here, this term, then we calculate Fourier transform of that and gain calculate partial differentials of that uh, Fourier transform uh, function, then we will have the, the complex amplitude of the diffraction pattern at a given distance such as Z. Okay, let us show uh, the theory here. Uh, therefore, uh, we, we are able to calculate uh, theoretically the diffraction patterns by some mathematical uh, functions. Here I show that we can use diffraction to characterize and to determine the, the topological charge of a given vortex beam. Suppose that we have this vortex beam with this uh, with, with the corresponding phase pattern here then if the, we let to pass this beam through this kind of phase aperture we call it as a hyperbolic gaussian phase mask then just after the phase mask we will have this kind of phase phase pattern for the light and under propagation, we, we can see that at a, uh, at a propagation distance of two meters, we have this kind of intensity pattern. And uh, you can see that we have elongated intensity spots and the number of uh, dark lines between uh, bright spots can show the topological charge of the light i show that here i show that the diffraction can be used to determine the characters characters of a vortex beam okay here you can see uh, such patterns such diffraction patterns under diffraction of different uh, different vortex beam from 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 the same phase aperture Okay, uh, I would like to introduce another uh, very another method for characterization of vortex beam having higher order radial indices. For a for a given uh, vortex beam having high order radial indices, its complex amplitude can be given with this equation here. L show its uh, uh, topological charge and P show its uh, radial indices. In the diffraction of this kind of vortex beams, from a grating having a parabolic line, we will have this kind of diffraction patterns. And you can see that the P and L parameter of the vortex beam can be easily determined by diffraction, okay? And here, some other results can be seen in the diffraction of different vortex beams having different L and P 
values and their propagation. And some experimental and theoretical results can be see and can be compared together here. And you can see that uh, both results are consistent. Okay, let us consider the diffraction of vortex beam from periodic, periodic structures. The periodic structures have this kind of transmission function. The transmission function repeats itself by uh, translation in x and in y direction. This kind of structures can be represented with a free series and this uh, coefficient can be determined by this, uh, this kind of um, integrals, okay? And uh, by the mentioned uh, method, we can calculate again the, 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 the diffraction pattern. And here I present the results of diffraction from a two-dimensional sinusoidal grating. You can see the results here in the in the Talbot planes when the topological charge of incident beam is out we have a generation of array of vortex beam at the Talbot plane here you can see the generated array of vortex beams and the corresponding phase pattern as you can see the incident beam have a, uh, have a topological charge equal to five, but if you see the, the corresponding phase pattern at the Talbot plane, you can see that the resulted vortex arrays, all of them have a topological charge equal to one, not five. But for the, for the case, uh, when topological charge of the incident beam is equal to an even number, then we will have just self-image of the grating and the multiplication of vortex beam doesn't, uh, not, not, not occurred, yeah. Now let us consider the diffractional vortex beam from a two-dimensional uh, two-dimensional binary uh, grating, uh, which is known as a two-dimensional binary grating. Here again, we see the same results for the out value of topological charge. Multipl multiplication of vortex beam can be occur. But for the even number of topological charge, we have just uh, self-imaging of the grating. Now, if we reduce the opening number of the two-dimensional grating, such as this one you can see here, then the results will change. You can see that if we use a two-dimensional grating with a small num value of opening number, then the produced uh, uh, array of uh, vortex beam have the same topological charge of the incident beam. You can see here the generated array of vortex beams and here you can see the corresponding phase pattern and uh, the topological charge can be determined by, the, by an uh, integral over a circle uh, surrounding the center of pattern. Okay, here also you can see that uh, uh, in the diffraction of a plane wave from such grating, we, we can see both effects uh, of the diffraction of a plane wave, a vortex beam from a sinusoidal and binary two-dimensional grating. At near distances, we see that, we know that all of the diffraction orders can be interference. Then we can produce an array of vortex beam with topological charge of equal to the topological charge of the incident 
beam as you can see here but at far distances from the grating we will have just a multiplication of vortex beam but with a with a topological charge of equal one just one not the same as the topological charge of the incident beam okay let us uh, here uh, you can see generate experimentally generation of vortex beam by diffraction at the at the Talbot plane under diffraction from a two-dimensional grating having a small opening number. Here you can see that the diffracted pattern uh the, 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 the in the diffracted pattern we produced an array of vortex beam having uh higher radial index in this pattern the radial index is equal to and in this pattern the radial index is equal to one in this patterns the uh, the pattern having green color showed experimental results the patterns having red color are produced by theory and the pattern having gray color uh, uh, are produced by simulation of propagation and all of the results are consistent okay Again, we uh, here I show you the result of diffraction of a vortex beam from a radial grating. Let us to see what happened. If a vortex beam passes through a radial grating, just after the grating, we have this kind of pattern. But under propagation, we will have this kind of patterns. If the number of spokes of the grating, radial grating, to be equal to the to the topological charge of uh, incident beam, then we will have this kind of patterns. In the center of the diffracted patterns, we have an bright spot. But for other cases, on the axis we haven't any intensity. Therefore, we are able we are able to detect the topological charge of the incident beam just by measuring the intensity. I named this spot as the Poisson spot with radial, uh, with, uh, with vortex beam using a radial approach, a radial grating. Uh, you know that if we use if we use a sphere uh, uh, and we can see in the diffraction of a plane wave from this sphere, just at the center of dark area, we can see a bright spot that is known as Poisson spot. Here we can see the a similar spot with the vortex beam. And I name, as I say, I I name this one as a as a, a Poisson spot with vortex beams. Okay. We also use the, 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 the diffraction pattern from radial gratings for for multiple trapping, and you can see some results here. Actually. This is a to, this is a multiple trapping of particles in two dimension because we used a radial carpet beam and we haven't three dimensional gradient for the intensity. Each of the main spots of the radial carpet beam can trap particles on the on the main intensity spot position but it is not possible to trap particles 
three-dimensionally because of in the propagation direction we haven't any intensity gradient here you can see that by rotating the grating it is easy to rotate all of the trapped particles okay and if we use a if we use a polarized beam and uh, and illuminate the radial uh, grating then we will uh, we, we will uh, we will we will be able to to trap a uh, uh, to trap particle and rotate it axially if it to be uh, uh, okay Okay, now I can introduce a new kind of amplitude apertures. I call this aperture as pure amplitude octagonal, almost periodic structure. Why octagonal? Because of at the Fourier uh, space, it has eight bright spots or impulses. This is completely or pure amplitude pattern. Because of it, it is pure amplitude, construction and preparing of it is very easy and low cost. Now let us consider the diffraction of pattern, the diffraction of plane, Gaussian and vortex beam from such structures. The intensity profile, the, the transmission profile of uh, that structure can be written in this form. And its Fourier has this kind of uh, formulation. And for octagonal, uh, pure amplitude structure, we have this kind of transmission function. Uh, uh, and uh, its corresponding uh, corresponding spatial uh, uh, spectrum is illustrated here. In the propagation of a Gaussian beam, through uh, that kind of structure, we will have this kind of uh, uh, amplitude structure distribution okay also we have uh, investigated the near field diffraction of this kind of patterns you can see the near field diffraction pattern of pure amplitude structure here and the corresponding phase can be seen here as you can see the pure amplitude pure amplitude, almost periodic structures have Talbot self-imaging, have self-imaging. Okay, now consider the diffraction of a Gaussian beam from a pure amplitude octagonal almost periodic structure. At the same time, consider that the diffracted pattern passes through a positive lens. Then after the lens, we will have this kind of intensity patterns. And uh, for different uh, value of uh, value of beam waste, we will have different diffraction patterns. You can see that at the focal plane of the lens, we can access to multiple focused uh, beams. Uh, 
uh, you can see the focusing property of the beams at the focal plane. You can see just only two of the beams here because uh, we illustrate the cross section of the beam along propagation direction. Okay, here you can see the diffraction pattern of a Gaussian beam from a pure amplitude octagonal almost periodic structure. Under propagation, first you can see near field diffraction pattern, then you will see far field diffraction pattern, And at the focus, you see whole free transform of the pattern, then different impulses interfere again, interfere again. Here we have sharp focused three dimensional sharp focused beams. Each of them can be act as a distinct trap. Now we are going to use this one. Uh, uh, let us show the real diffraction pattern, including the central uh, diffraction order. In the first movie, we remove the, the central or DC diffraction term. Here you can see all of nine impulses. But in the practice, we can remove the central beam by inserting an obstacle at the focal plane. Okay. We have used this kind of optical tuser and used uh, pure amplitude octagonal almost periodic structure here to, to produce multiple focused beam at the focal plane of the objective. Then we able to trap multi-particle in the setup. You can see trapping of multi-particles using this device. This kind of multiple trapping is three-dimensional because of all of trapped beams focused at the focal plane of the objective. And here you can see that by rotating the structure, the printed structure, the trapped particle can be rotated together. And if we use polarized beam and uh, eliminate the structure with that, then we can rotate particles axially. The particle should be by, by reference, by, by reference, yeah. Results of this work are accepted for publication in optics letter. Here uh, we show that uh, the calculated power spectrum diagram of a trapped particle with a diameter of about one micrometer. And using this plus, we able to calculate the strength of trapping. Now let us uh, present another word, multiplication of larger Gaussian beams on a circular array using almost periodic structure. You can see different uh, pure amplitude almost periodic structures. This is completely periodic and this one is also periodic. This is also periodic, but others are almost periodic and you can see the corresponding impulses in the second row. Uh, in a setup like this one, we insert, we use a fork rating to generate uh, a Lager Gaussian beam 
uh, from a uh, incident or uh, incident Gaussian beam, then by applying, uh, by passing the Lager, introduced Lager Gaussian beam from pure amplitude octagonal grating structure, uh, we able to produce an array of vortex beams on a circular pass. You can see some simulations here. By very simple, low, cheap, easy to use structure, we are able to produce an area of vortex beam. This is the advantage of the diffraction. Here you can see multiplication of a vortex beam having higher radial index. I'm going to finish to okay and here you can see some experimental results of generation of uh, array of vortex beam using pure amplitude different pure amplitude almost periodic structures and here okay thank you thank you for your attention